Gang, for over a year now, I've been talking about True Hemp Science Full Spectrum CBD oils and how they've reduced my anxiety and helped me get better sleep without waking up feeling foggy and confused. I've also talked about the Full Spectrum CBD bombs that relieved my hand pain last year and made playing piano and guitar much easier. Well, gang, today I'm going to tell you about True Hemp Science organic gummies made with Full Spectrum hemp oil that are available now. They come in two different gauges. There are five uh, 50 milligram ones that have 50 milligrams of CBD and 1.5 milligrams of THC. Then there are ones that are 100 milligrams of CBD and 5 milligrams of THC. Absolutely delicious uh, lemon lime slash orange flavors and also watermelon black cherry flavors. Super, super delicious. Now, now they also have a complete line of full spectrum CBD products, including oils, tinctures, skincare lotions, sports rubs, chocolates, gummies, all kinds of stuff. Well, gang, How Did I Get Here has teamed up with True Hemp Science to bring you a very special offer that benefits all of us. Spend $100 or more at TrueHempScience.com and you will get a free gift. Just enter the code HDIGH at checkout. There's a little code place there for you to enter it. H-D-I-G-H and you will get a free gift with purchase. That's right. Go to TrueHempScience.com and balance your body and mind with True Hemp Science. Let's get down. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for How Did I Get Here? And now here is your host. I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys have all had a good week, whatever it is you did this week. Maybe you're in Austin taking in South by Southwest. It's back, baby. It's back, baby. I'm actually doing this on Thursday, and I was supposed to MC an event today that was outside, and they have canceled it because of rain or impending rain or whatever, and uh, that's actually okay, man. I'm kind of tired. I've been running around, going to a lot of events. I don't have a badge or anything this year, but I've going, been going to a lot of events uh, going to some day stuff, going to some evening stuff. It's been it's been a lot of fun, and uh, but I'm sure that Rosie is really glad to have me back today, and I'm glad to be back here with her. Gang, I want to let you know, if you're listening to this show the day that it comes out, Friday, March 17th, uh, this is the Friday of South by Southwest, Austin Music Foundation is hosting a fantastic showcase tonight that is an official South by Southwest showcase. However, there's no badges required, no wristbands required, free entry all ages invited. This is a great thing, and it celebrates our artist development program. It is uh, Austin Music Foundation presents Austin ATX Gen Next with a lot of our artist development program artists from uh, year six, including El Combo Oscuro, one of uh, Austin's greatest psychedelic cumbia bands out there. Soul pop artist Jake Lloyd, who's tearing it up, man. I mean, I see him playing like five or six shows a day. Unbelievable, man. It's going to be a great show. Uh, rock band, The Dead Coats, singer, songwriter, poet Hawkins, all these great artists are playing and it will be, they'll be kicking it off at 7 p.m. with Sammy and the Engine. All right. So each band goes on like 7 o'clock, Sammy and the Engine, 8 o'clock, Poet Hawkins, 9 p.m., The Dead Coats, and on and on. I'll put a link to this in our, in, uh, on our Facebook page and you can go there and, and like our Facebook page while you're there, but also you can find out what's going on with this event. Come on out and check it out. It's going to take place at the Sheraton Backyard, which is at the Sheraton Hotel on 11th Street right here in Austin. All right. Go to austinmusicfoundation.org for more information. If you're wondering what the Austin Music Foundation is, it's a great organization that for 21 years has been providing uh, education to Austin musicians and, and uh, music professionals at no cost to them. All right. I'm part of that organization. I've been working with the Austin Music Foundation's Artist Development Program for the last six years. It's been a lot of fun. We've been taking a few bands and helping them out, taking them in to record at the bubble with Frenchie Smith teaching them stuff that they need to know about. And uh, and so tonight we're going to be celebrating some of those bands. All right, so come on out. Tonight, Friday, March 17th, kicks off at 7 p.m. with Sammy and the Engine. And then you'll enjoy uh, sets from four of our fantastic artist development program, Year 6 Artists, tonight, March 17th at Sheraton Backyard. All kicks off at 7 p.m. with Sammy and the Engine. All right? All right. Hey, gang, I have a great show for you guys today. I have a fantastic show for you guys today. Austin jazz band Atlas Mayor returns to the show today. They were on a few years ago. Uh, Josh Peters, 
the guy who plays fretless oud and you and lute and uh joshua thompson who plays saxophone they are my guests on the show today they have a brand new ep out called hadal and you're wondering like what is hadal well the name hadal is atlas mayor's metaphor for their post-pandemic artistic perseverance within a rapidly changing global context right the world is changing it's changing fast things are going all over the place artists are sent here or or artists yeah artists are sent here that's what i would say from from the magical land of art people to sort of make sense of that reinterpret it and bring it back these guys are amazing musicians this is their first collection that's informed by uh music from all over the world like uh they use this arab makamat modal system I know, I don't even understand it. Uh, Brazilian rhythms, Gulf rhythms from Saudi Arabia, all kinds of music from all over the world, blending it into this gorgeous, gorgeous EP, Hadal. Available now wherever, where, wherever it is that you stream and download music. Uh, you can find them at atlasmayor.com. They'll be playing shows everywhere. And in fact, gang, they're playing tonight. Their South by Southwest showcase is tonight, Friday, March 17th at midnight at, uh, at Parker Jazz Lounge. You can look it up wherever it is that you find stuff or go to atlasmayor.com to find out what else is going on with these guys. We have a fantastic conversation. And uh, before we get into it, let me just tell you a quick aside. When I started this podcast 11 and a half years ago, there were yard guys. I live in an apartment complex and I've lived here the whole time. So there are yard guys that come once a week. However, that once a week is never uh, really the same. They're, they're not on an exact schedule for their once a week visits. So take, for instance, uh, one week they'll come on Tuesday at uh, 2. And then uh, the next week they'll come on Thursday at 11 in the morning. You just never know when it's happening. So I can't really schedule my podcast around it. I actually had to, we had to stop talking for a little while. And I had to go back and like take out a whole part where we were just waiting for the to end. But it comes in and out a little bit. The guys are, the guys are blowing. And, uh, and you can hear it a little bit, but, but Josh and Joshua have a lot to say that's worth hearing. So, uh, so enjoy my conversation with Josh Peters and Joshua Thompson from Atlas Mayor. Let's get down. Were you guys up for Sonic Guild, uh, Black Fret? Uh, uh, no, we hands? haven't been. We haven't been, but I was there with uh, Cilantro Boombox. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Some of the crew there. I love um, those dudes. I, yeah, so I'm in that, that crew, you know. So we were, I think that was 2020 and 2021. We were with uh, the black, the former Black Fret. Yeah. They've only done more, man. They've expanded. They're in yeah. uh, Denver and Seattle and shit now. Right. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Mm. Uh. What's going on? I, you like that? Tell me about the oud. Explain that instrument to me, because I don't know, man. Yeah, well, it's um, it's a either eleven or thirteen string fretless lute. That's um, very old instrument. It's been around since before the European lute. It's the kind of the the predecessor, and but it's it's been played continuously for you know. Probably so. It's a Middle Eastern lute. Well, yeah, well, it's it's used in North Africa. It's used okay. in the Mediterranean. It's used. It was once used in Europe. It was used. It is. It's used in Central Asia to a degree. Um, Greece, Greece, Mediterranean. Uh, yeah, East Africa. There's a Iranian barabat. Yep, that's similar. An instrument that mm-hmm. Josh Peters also plays on our actually yeah. on our our new album he's yeah, playing butter on that it. but yeah it's it's got a big bold wooden it's a wooden stringed instrument it's got a big bold back um no frets so that's the big difference between between oud and european lute is that there's no frets on it right and for those listening didn't sting do like a whole thing with a lute at some point wasn't he involved with the lute <laughs> the, I, I don't know. It's part of a movement like I can 20 years ago. And he was like, <laughs> it was, it wasn't, it was a weird thing. Cause like you guys, you guys create this music. That's like, 
works with that lute thing. He was just doing sting stuff. It's like, oh, look at this instrument. You know what I mean? Like, are you I'm thinking about a weird the, instrument. Are you thinking about the Sheb Memi sting collaboration no on idea. Desert Rose? That was a thing. The possibly. thing with the car commercial. I am yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't associate with that, but yeah, I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why I have such a nasty feeling towards Sting. I used to really like him as a kid. I love the police, but I don't listen to him anymore. I just like, I don't like that. I don't, what happened to me? I don't know, man. This I isn't mean, about me, though. Let's talk about you guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not really about any of us, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hadal. That's how you say it? Yeah, Hadal. Hadal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. And there's, uh, as we're talking about this, this uh, Middle Eastern fretless lute, the ode, the oud, uh, this, uh, this EP, there's a, a, a mashup of so many different places in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because it's really interesting. It's like, it's really awesome because, yeah. you know, like, I, I don't get, uh, and to say this like this sounds weird, but guys like you, on here, I always get like singer songwriter, like oh, I wrote this song in G. It's about my, you know, yeah, yeah, somebody broke my heart. But like, you guys are really like doing this really interesting, like forward and 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 you know, you're you're you there's there's roots in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you want to talk about how that all came together? Yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of things going on, a lot of things, um, and so we, I mean, we we started writing together we wrote a lot of the the melodic content um just kind of tossing ideas between each other and some of that is based in arabic maqam and turkish maqam uh kind of ideas which is the melodic language of those those traditions that's the Uh, maqam maqam mat yeah modal system yeah yeah Sorry. Yeah. So Muhammad some of it's some of it's coming from that, and some of it's coming more from, like basalt, is this just like minor pentatonic? Uh-huh. Um, I guess you could say that's more jazz influenced melodic material, to a degree, um, but it also has this this uh, African, West African kind of influence, mm-hmm. in that particular piece, and we kind of went with that in the rhythmic sections too. Um, there was, there was a lot of inspiration and a lot of these, um, a lot of it is like, we're not necessarily pulling a rhythm or an idea directly, but we're, we're think we're, we're using that as the inspiration. Like with, with basalt, for example, like I was listening to a lot of, uh, like high life from Ghana and thinking about that with the rhythm and then I did this drum arrangement for two drummers, kind of based on some of what I was hearing in in those recordings. Um, yeah, and then the and then like the tune basalt originally, like this, there's there's like a definitely definitely like a, a link with Ornette Coleman and f- mm-hmm. free jazz, free jazz. Uh, in, in inspiration in general. There, yeah, yeah. It, like yeah. how we start the piece is kind of a uh, a nod to Ornette with a har melodic. Uh, y- y- um, you know, approach to his compositions. Uh, That's the opening song. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. the, the the melody yeah. that comes in, it reminds you of of like those kind of like the, a specific era of jazz. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then we're doing this other thing with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we go into in the middle of that piece, we go into this rhythm that comes from Saudi Arabia. That's this very like, but also has kind of. Uh, is kind of reminiscent of Brazilian samba rhythms at the same time. Right, right. So it's like this uh, kind of connecting different musical influences that we have. Um, And I was really interested in, when we were working on this album, there's multiple rhythms that we use from that, uh, the Arabian Peninsula, the Khalij, um, because that was something that I was just really uh, listening to a lot at that time, was the music from that region. And I was really inspired by some of those rhythms. How, would, you, would you mind just real quick for, for somebody listening? Like, how do you how do you go find a bunch of stuff like that? Because I was looking for some seventies West African funk because I'm a huge fan of that stuff. And I there used to be a show that I could get from some college radio station on iTunes, yeah. but that's gone. And I was looking for stuff on 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 Spotify and having a hard time finding a spe- specific. How do you how do you search search that? 
Well, it helps to know some Arabic. <laughs> um, that's that's pretty helpful. Oh, that sucks. Um, but for me, you can find a lot of this stuff. Like, there's a lot of kind of curated playlists on Spotify, and like, you know, you can you can search around YouTube yeah. if you know some key terms. Okay. Uh, okay. That will help you a lot, and like specific artists too. Like, if you look up, you know, you could put on like Um Kulthum Radio, or you know, some really famous um, musician of a particular genre you're looking for, and then okay. you might be able to find some other things if you don't, you know, know anything about the the oh. musical culture or the language at all. Right. So you I'm might gonna... be able to use that as an avenue. Like, okay, I know I like this artist from this tradition. Like, let's see what else is kind of adjacent. Right. There's yeah. even like, um, I think there's even like an Arab jazz playlist on Spotify. Yeah, I think there's a couple actually. A couple. And yeah. also SoundCloud is, for some reason, is really popular in the Middle East for Middle Eastern music. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff on SoundCloud. Uh, yeah, and also like you can search, like uh, uh, a colleague of mine sent me a, 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 a an amazing playlist of Middle Eastern jazz uh, about a month ago. Um, so yeah, SoundCloud is like a big thing in that, with that, in that part of the world for playlists in general. But yeah, I mean, you know, this, like what Josh Peters is saying, you know, about <clears throat> these influences rhythmically, I would also add that like a lot of these things, you know, are different rhythms or, or, or coming from different creative sources that have also been in the band for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, this is particularly different because of the high life and the, the golf, um, rhythms, but like the Brazilian influence, the Afro Cuban influence, uh, maybe that, maybe the Afro Cuban is a little bit more recent, uh, but like the Turkish, the nine, eight rhythm that we have on, uh, Fata Morgana, that's something that's been around for a while that we yeah. kind of like use that. Um, and explored it in a new way on this particular record influenced by other types of music. Like I was writing about, we were listening to, you know, myself, my inspiration for that was like Farouk C. Bay and the loft jazz scene of, of New York in the 70s. Um, the loft jazz yeah, scene? Yeah, the loft okay, jazz okay. scene. It, you know, like Albert Eiler, all this, all this stuff I don't that know was, was coming out. Like um, um, David S. Ware, people like that. Uh, so yeah, you, you know, um, a lot of, again, a lot of stuff flying around. But you know, specifically, you know, and the, like you were talking about asking about the resources where we find some of this stuff. We we're also connected with a community and communities of people and musicians who play Middle Eastern music. Is we played we played in ensembles here at UT. Okay, we've been you know I've been to Turkey. We have a lot of Turkish friends. So we have like I, myself, I've been accumulating a lot of texts. And I know, like Peter's, uh, you know, being from North Texas, and also his compositional ideas and the things that he's been studying. So between us, we have a lot of a lot of stuff to draw. A lot of off knowledge, of. yeah. Well, yeah, I, well, we're well, just we're getting there. The yeah. Yeah, 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 we're yeah, getting yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're eternal students. But, yeah, but yeah. yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of there's a lot of influences coming together, and there's a lot of. Um, both new inspiration and inspiration that's been with us for a long time coming yeah. together. I noticed that when you when you play music from other places in the world, uh, it's different than being like like a American and British rock dude, like you know me. Like that's what I've been listening to my whole life, or like you know Americana or some shit. But there there seems to be like when I talk to people like the members of Leyline, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. who are nothing like you guys, but philosophically. They're bringing together all of these different, and they yeah, spend a lot right. of time going to these places and like yeah. immersing themselves in this culture. That there, there is like this lifelong. When you're when you're involved in world music and doing the kind of thing that you guys are doing, there's this lifelong like journey of learning. Like it's it's like a, a quest. You're never going to be Yoda. No. <laughs> yeah, and that's I think that's there's a common thread of that in a lot of different musical traditions, um, from jazz to you know indian music arabic and turkish musics you know lots of i mean any any music really any like traditional music that you might find uh folk music any kind of yeah. folk music or yeah. classical music sure. of different places there's kind of a there's an attitude of like you know always being in service of the music and the art and like 
always being looking for the next way to refine and and you know create better art and, bit, un- and understand of, the music better too yeah yeah, yeah. and self reflection like, you yeah. know and and like this uh, this process of cultivation that that uh, you know it, Hopefully, by the time we're like really old, we'll be really good at what we do. You know, yeah, this kind of thing. You know, I'm sure that's but. the way it's supposed <laughs> to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems also like in the style of music that you play, you're allowed to do that. It's not like you're doing like a pop record where you got to be like once you're 30, you're like old. Right. You know what I mean? Like the wisdom is appreciated in jazz. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. I feel like you're not really even in your prime until you're. Well, I don't know. People could debate, but like, yeah. you know, like your forties and fifties are where you're, you know, you're, you know, trying to be coming into your own sound and yeah, what with what you're doing. And like, you know, if you talk to like Indian classical musicians, it's like you're, you're not even like at all at your prime until you're like right. much, much older. Like they know? don't let you out of the tabla room. Yeah, it's uh, like until you're like six. Nobody's gonna call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody's gonna call you Ustad until you're like really you know right you're right. already like a master and teaching people and or like in moroccan culture where you're you're playing the crack eggs for years and years and years and years before you ever get to play the gimri you know yeah. and that's that's reserved for the malam or like the the, the, the master teacher yeah you know? um talk so you guys you guys you guys co-compose these pieces yeah how how what what, what does that look like like, do you do some on your own and send it to each other via Dropbox or some shit, or do you do you actually sit in a room and bang this out? No, it's a it's a mix. I mean, yeah. we'll definitely write different things on our own, uh, and then try to put it together. Or mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, somebody will come up with a more complete idea, and then we'll work on it that way. Uh, but it's you know, it's a mix and match of things. Yeah, um, you know, we did a lot of writing remotely during the pandemic doing more Dropbox and at home voice note type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we enjoy getting together and being in a room the most. Yeah. Uh, and then, then taking whatever we have worked on and then, and then go back to our own little woodshed on our own and our room and refine things and then come back with something and then put it together. And then once we have a song together, then we're teaching it to the band, a band. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's kind of what we do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I think there's, and it depends on the the composition too. Like sometimes one of us will come with something fairly complete and then we'll just kind of refine and tweak and maybe the other person will add something to it. Um, And other times it's more fluid and just we're, we're improvising and then, you know, he'll play something and I'll be like, Oh, what's that? Play that again. You know, we try to catch these little ideas and turn them into something. Do you, do you, I know that you do it differently every time, but does it help to start off with like a groove? Like, do you... Not you really. Know, we don't, you guys yeah. made the exact same face. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 yeah, not really. No, sometimes, you, I mean, sometimes, sometimes but yeah. usually not. Usually not, yeah. It's, it's, I think both of our... I think we both have a very, like, melodically driven writing style. Yeah, it comes through in the music. About, we're thinking about melody first, and then we're kind of seeing, like, oh, okay, so here's this melody. What What's the right groove for this, you know? Yeah. It's like it's melody and then the rhythm... Mm-hmm. Which yeah. obviously is a part of the groove, but yeah. you know, but like specifically, like the like what rhythm is this? Like what what are we actually playing this song? And what what time signature is this going? Is this really in twenty five, or can we simplify it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which which is one of the pieces we're working on now. We oh, thought no it was tw- we thought it was twenty five, and we realized that it's now it's like seven and eight or something. Yeah, or different sections of in different sections of things, mostly. Yeah, that was a that was a, a fun kind of process with that because Do you say fun sarcastically or you seriously? No, no, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Truly fun. Um, because I mean for me I love that kind of nerdy yeah, yeah, yeah. nerdy stuff yeah. of like like you know, like I think a lot of that piece was like you were playing, you had this whole melodic idea. Yeah. And I basically transcribed it. Yeah, he's trying to help me out. We were trying to figure out what this is. Because he was playing this thing and I was like, Wow, it's cool. What is what is going on here? And I transcribed it, and it was like, oh, we're in like 25, 8 time signature. Like, interesting. And then as we kept developing it, we kind of realized that it didn't need to be that, like, yeah. like the way he was playing it maybe changed a little bit. And I was like, oh, actually, this works. And now we can just be in four, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Um, so it's, yeah, there's a lot of like, uh, malleability in the process. And sometimes, sometimes it really is like, no, it, it needs to be in 25. And then other times it's like, actually we can just shorten this bar a little bit. And now it's like in, you know, four or six or like, you know, and, and I think too, usually like, you know, I said, we're, we're melodically driven, but I, we're usually hearing some kind of rhythm internally sure. yeah. as you yeah, do, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And then it's a matter of figuring out what that, what that's going to actually look like with a band. Yeah. You know, do you, do you kind of record them at the same time that you're kind of like trying to lay them out if you're working by yourself or. Yeah. I mean, we do like, we'll do, we'll record our sessions together and mm -hmm. then we can listen back to like what we were playing and right. like ideas and things. And then, because um, a lot, I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but, but 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 I'm trying to clarify and just kind of find out because because some of what you do is is improvisational, bouncing off of each other when you're playing together, right? Yeah, I mean, it sure. feels that way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Imp improvisation is a huge component, sure, of 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 our sound in general and, and of jazz. Yeah, and and just yeah. you know, and and like if it's 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 that's how the these songs i mean for me i you know the improvisation and the new approach with it and it not being stuck to one way that it's played that's what gives the song life and and, yeah. and the reason to keep playing it yeah that it does change so change mm -hmm. is i think uh i look at these songs as like a evolving uh living being mm -hmm. they're going to be changing we're all changing i mean so when you're improvising your reflection you're reflecting that exactly and putting right. that into the music yeah all right, so Friday, March 17th, midnight at Parker Jazz Club. You guys Correct. are, what are you doing for that? Like, are you playing uh, the EP in its entirety or are you um, doing a mixture of stuff? Like, how do you guys do that? Yeah, well, we're definitely going to be playing material off of the new sure. release uh, to support the record and, and, and have a curated program for that show. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, we have a nice, nice little thing going, a nice little program set up that we're, we're still working on actually we had a great rehearsal today so we're excited about what we're gonna do so yeah it's gonna be good yeah you know how much improvisation happens then at the show during the like during that like during your south by southwest thing is there is, is it less improvisational or is it is it still as free as a normal uh you know we kind of write the set depending on the depending on how, like the allotted time of the showcase right so 40 minutes yeah. yeah. So, you know, we want to come with a nice 40 minute set. I mean, there's still going to be improvisation, but, you know, um, we may abbreviate certain sections or, yeah. or you know, shorten certain things because we want to play, you know. As many songs as possible. Well, right. not necessarily, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's not, not too much time. I mean, that's basically like a short set for us. I mean, for anybody. I mean, we're used to playing. I mean, we could play for three, four hours. Sure. sure. I imagine you can. You know how it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we don't do that so often anymore, but we like to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have that great of a vocabulary improvisationally to play four hours of just making shit up. I'll be honest with you. Well, we have like... I, like, I write like songs. I with, mean, that's cool. I, I mean... <laughs> but we I live all, in this world with parameters. We also yeah. do have enough actual songs yeah, yeah. to play. But yeah, I mean, in that case, we could play for eight hours. If yeah, just if we're playing. just playing. Yeah. Do you guys? Uh, you were saying that you did. You did a duo. Uh, yeah. At, at uh, Central Market. No, we're no. doing. Uh, we're doing a duo at Carousel Lounge. Carousel Lounge. That's right. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. On. Uh, that's this Friday, I believe. That's right? yeah. The March tenth. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be past this. But what do you do when you do a duo? What What are you doing? Well, it depends. What instruments? Um, we'll do. This this coming one is more of an experimental duo, um, so we do that. No, we also do we'll also do a duo and where we actually play Atlas Mayor songs, um, and it's just like a normal kind of Atlas Mayor show, but it's just saxophone and, and ode, and I might play some percussion. Um, uh, but yeah, and this this come this one coming up is more experimental and it's more free, so it's it's uh, I'm going to be doing percussion and ode and modular synth stuff and trumpet and it's just like an open-ended flutes I'll probably be yeah, playing some play different some flutes some Peru i have these peruvian flutes i want to play more of but yeah i mean it's cool that you mentioned that because like 
Atlas Mayor, we have kind of projects within the band. Right, right. So we have like the band. It's like a, usually like a four piece, sometimes a five piece. And then we have like the band that we play our written compositions. And then we have another project within the band called Atlas Mayor Palindrome, which is more experimental. It's more improvisational in general. And we recorded an album a number of years ago called Palindrome. And now this is becoming like an ongoing project within the group. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing we do. Then sometimes we'll do a configuration with just uh, Indian tablas as a trio. Yeah, I saw that. Mm-hmm. And I want to see that. When are you guys cool. doing that again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know yet, but uh, we will I, be doing I it. I hope we're doing it soon because I really enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've like also done a, like a bass trio with no drums where it's like oud saxophone bass, uh, which is also really nice. That's pretty awesome. Yes. So, yeah, there's different configurations and, and different things happen in those different kind of sub projects of the band. Like it kind of sounds like we're all over the place, but yeah. really, but really it's like we have certain written material that we're conceiving of it conceptually in different kind of environments. And then we have other like uh, approaches to improvisation that we're exploring in different configurations. Yeah. Sure. So it's not quite as as insane as it yeah. sounds. Yeah, it's right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, you guys more see, but, but, but I can like, see that it sounds kind of insane. <laughs> feels that way uh not very often actually but we've been doing it a long time you know um how is it to get through those like when you guys are working on on something what what like what like uh joshua what do you bring like what like what role do you guys play when you're creating together Mm -hmm. i'm trying to figure out the dynamic between you two um really it's anything i mean we it's open i mean Josh Peters and I are driving it creatively and depending on what it is, whether or not it's a song or like a show, you know, um, it's, it's a lot of back and forth, Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, you just kind of like whoever's like whoever has the idea kind of leads it and the other guy helps. Well, it's kind of like we have certain ideas we're bringing to the table and then certain things stick at certain times and then we're, we're working on that. I mean, we have like a lot of things in the pipe that we haven't even performed live. Yeah. Like we have a whole record to record, like a new thing and like two records to record. So it's just about like, we have a lot of ideas. That's just about like where we're at in the pipe of like w- finishing certain, like we, now we have a, another record that's finished in terms of the writing it uh, uh-huh. essentially. And then we have other ideas that we're finishing to write. Yeah. Where did you record this, this EP? Uh, we recorded this at uh, hen house recording. Where's that? That's up on Burnett. Did you, how do you, how do you, when you record this stuff, like, do you guys re- record together as a group live? Mm. Yeah. Are you able to do that? Cause sometimes, yeah, you know, that's, that's what we did for this one. We just, um, we were, well, we had me and Tarek, the bass player were in a room together. The two drummers were in a room together and, uh, Joshua Thompson was in a, a little isolation room, but we played the whole thing. We played it live together. Yeah. So we, we weren't able to all be like, totally in the same room together no but, but I mean, we could see we had some lines making of music sight at and, the same time and, and reacting yeah. off of each other which yeah. is yeah. it was right. recorded live in that way and that's what we prefer to do because um, it really we want to capture the energy of the live performance yeah yeah and, and like a lot of times you know uh, I, I well i used to um want to like overdub solos and stuff mm-hmm. um and now you know, we have that option of going at, I mean, we, we will go ahead and, you know, punch something in if we really want to get it better. We're not like, yeah, you know, purely all it has to be 100% yeah. live in real time or we're weird about it. Most of the time, the live solo stays anyways because it's better Yeah, because of the energy, you know. But, you know, we like to, I, I think we believe in making, uh, you know, records as best as they can be, you know. Yeah. Embracing technology and mm. opportunities, though. So change things <laughs> yeah yeah um do you guys know who bob left sets is it's like an old school music business critic mm. like it's just it's no. always letting you know what's happening in the business but mm-hmm. in the last like 10 years he started a podcast oh. but he he's a he's like a, an old dude and he's almost like your uncle that's like concerned about how you're making a living so he always asks people like the weirdest questions like you have enough money to live right so <laughs> but there is there is something i mean there is like an economic aspect to music that is is a difficult thing like we we it's, it, we don't yeah. we don't have the the we can't make money off of the actual music anymore which is a weird thing you got to play these shows or you got to have merch like how do you guys 
Uh, because there's not a lot of radio stations playing music like what you do. Right. And there's not a lot of like, uh, like you know, I, I went to this uh, Unity Festival yesterday. There was no band like yours playing. I was thinking about that today when I was listening to the EP. I always hear like pop people here in Austin talk about how they're marginalized. But I'm like, what about fucking jazz guys? Sure. Like, yeah. you know, I, th- there's a new place, Parker Jazz Club. I mean, that's that's a hopeful thing, like a really cool place opened. Yeah. That's, right. place. that's fancy and nice. Sure. Yeah. And like a good place for you to showcase your music. But like, right. are you guys able to tour and stuff like that or go out and play shows or do you like go, you know, I don't know. I mean, honestly, touring is, I mean, we have toured in the past. Uh, we want to tour again. We're working on that. We're, we're trying to stretch mm-hmm. throughout Texas and we've been doing that. We've been up in North Texas playing some shows and we were out in Houston in December. Oh, that's cool. So we've been trying to work. Texas more, which is interesting. Uh, you know, there's always limitations, you know, with budget and things like that. Uh, you know, a lot of, I mean, touring has been brutal for people, for people the last few years. So, you know, um, totally, brutal. you know, yeah, totally yeah. brutal. I mean, we've cut back. We're trying to do it. Um, that's, that's the goal. And, you know, just staying with it and, you know, making strides right. within, within the industry and, and, and trying to meet more like-minded individuals who are, who are booking agents and managers and people, you know, because, you know, and in Austin, there's always been a lack of infrastructure comparatively to other big markets. Right. You know. It also seems like you guys are poised to like if somebody were making a film or like your music is really has a very strong visual thing, too. It seems like you could Thank work. You soundtrack wise or like or scoring wise if you if you you know if someone was looking for for sure yeah for that kind of thing because i I, i'm always like trying to look for outlets like i don't know if you guys i work with the austin music foundation Mm -hmm. and i mentor in their artist artist development program so i'm always trying to find like how how can you turn this into something that you can you know keep on making more stuff yeah right keep on affording studio time at least you know if you can't if you can't use it to feed yourself at least use it to like sustain itself and keep growing on its own yeah like working as your own record label. Yeah. If you're listening to this and you, uh, you're you making a film, <laughs> let us know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, let me know if you don't want their stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the other thing is everyone's in competition with each other. Um, but you guys, I mean, you did you did get a publicist, and that, that's one way to get the word out about stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we have a publicist. We have, you know, people on staff who work with us. We have consultants and... Yeah, you know. I like your publicist a lot, by the way. Ryan, he's a nice yeah. guy. He's always yeah, he's been real good. cool. He's a good dude. He's and Mercedes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. The good people. So, you know, it's but it, it takes a long time. I mean, well, you know, it doesn't have to take a long time, but, you know, it's you want to be working with people you feel good about and right. who can get you to where you want to be and you right. can communicate with. And, and if you're not finding that, then you need to keep doing it yourself. Right. And that's the name of the game. I mean, I'm, you're, I'm, you're always doing it. We're always doing it ourselves. You know? Yeah. And it seems like the success of what you do would be predicated more on uh, a body of work. Like the more you, you know what I mean? Like having more music and, and, and what people would get from you seeing you live as opposed to like, uh, your success all hinging on a song being able to get on a radio. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. yeah like yeah. there's a, a little bit more of a... Uh, have you guys ever heard of this guy, David Kolar? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I just had him on the show. He's uh, like... Is he Danish? Some Danish, Something like, like avant-garde jazz guitar player guy? It's pretty interesting. He's he's He broke into the film thing and yeah. like documentaries and stuff in Europe, which is a, a good a good sort of like sustaining thing for them. Oh yeah, but yeah, your music has like so much. It 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 uh, you know it it sets a tone. Like mm. there's a feeling when you know what I mean, and it yeah. seems like in that in in the right circumstance, that music would enhance the feeling of what you're seeing visually. Mm-hmm. You guys make videos. We need more. We need yeah. more. We need to make more videos. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's some place that we uh, we've discussed a lot about that we we want to advance. Yeah, coming up here. I, I think, you know, another, I think like, because you're talking about like, you, you, you're mentioning that our music is kind of to you, you know, this, this kind of cinematograph, yeah. cinematographic element. Yeah. I feel like we want to find somebody who does video and film almost like there would be like another entity and number member of the a collaborator. collaborator. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we haven't really found that yet. Yeah. Yeah. But we may, we're, we're, we're in talks. It's so, awesome, yeah, too, because, yeah. like, now you have access to everyone in the world, because that person might not be in Austin. Yeah. You right. Yeah. Sure. You never know. Um, so, you guys you guys do stuff at Carousel Lounge. You do stuff at Parker Jazz Club. Where else are you guys uh, playing? 
these days? Uh, we're playing at Central Market Westgate, and that's our kind of like family friendly event. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll mm. be there on March 11th. Uh, we have another, we're going to be on Fox News in the morning. We're going to do Good Day Austin. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to bring South by? Uh, well, this, week, this week. Yeah. This yeah, week. This week. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, we, and we got something special for Fox News. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. We got something special. Um, yeah. There, I, don't I know. guess he can't tell. No, yeah. this is coming out after it. Yeah. So you oh, can yeah. Tell me. It's going to oh, be, yeah. yeah, that's true. It's, yeah, yeah well, we're going to do this wild improvisation right out of the gate. And then go into a tune, and yeah, it's a long, long composition. So, do they yeah. like? It, aren't there sections like real short or something? <laughs> well, we have, we have a. Well, we have like five minutes. or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. You know, I I in uh, two thousand and five, yeah, two thousand five, during the uh, American Idol television season of two thousand and five, I was on a panel that used to go on Fox News uh, in the morning. Here, it was like. Uh, it was me and uh, do you guys know Spencer Gibb? He's Robin Gibb from the Bee Gees. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was used to be my neighbor and uh, oh, cool. and then and then like the television critic from the Chronicle and the music critic from the Chronicle <laughs> and we would we would go on the day of the thing and say who we thought was going to get kicked off the next day or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, whenever people talk about Fox News, I always just think about like I thought for some reason I thought I was going to have a job. Yeah. <laughs> then like I thought, but eventually I got let go because I was. It was the year that Paula Abdul was like on pills, and I was making I was making fun of her too much. And you're not yeah. supposed to make fun of the show. You can make fun of the contestants, but you oh. can't make fun of the show because uh, you're on Fox uh -huh. and it's a Fox show. So it was it was just kind of like hey we're not gonna have you back man <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway um so that's interesting man i wonder if it's gonna like what's gonna happen to those people in the morning just having their cereal and like whoa yeah yeah that's the idea yeah. that's the idea so it should be hot it's yeah gonna, it's gonna yeah. be hot it's gonna be hot there's gonna be caffeine it's gonna be good yeah um <laughs> high energy what other what other kind of outlets do you guys get to go do those are those are fun. I like i always like going on those morning mm -hmm. shows and stuff yeah it's fun yeah you ever stayed up all night doing drugs and gone on one i did no but <laughs> it was we, the dumbest thing ever yeah. that sounds pretty it was bad. awesome <laughs> during the pandemic we did a live stream for tokyo japan oh, oh yeah that was that, was, that, that, that felt like we <laughs> may have been on drugs but we were not because it was just so so early. It was so early. Like, like we started at like three a.m. and then yeah. like we started rolling at like five thirty. And it wow, was, it was insane. And it was just kind of bizarre. It was really bizarre. Being that it was like we were just doing this live stream in you know somebody's House. living room. Yeah, <laughs> we all like we all like showed up at like three in the morning with our coffee. So and weird. Like, tried to eat some breakfast and have our coffee and then start playing for people in Japan. It was like. A very surreal kind of did you guys do a lot of live streams during the pandemic we did like yeah, we did quite a bit especially two, in the beginning two three times a month yeah that oh, that's, was, cool. that, that's a lot yeah i think like it was kind of a lot yeah and it, we realized like you know like i'm so glad we're not doing that but anymore yeah it was i mean like looking <laughs> yeah, back me it was so awful but at the same time it was great because you know uh it was it was just as much for us as it was for yeah. anybody you know yeah. just to keep playing that, that, i mean that, that was like such an accomplishment at that time to play music man you know with yeah. people with humans yeah 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 you know i, I did have the thing and, I, and i'm glad it's over because i didn't enjoy it that much but there there was a thing that happened like i would uh, uh i would do them for like a month i was just looking because i realized that one of the things i got is still set up there to do the piano yeah. songs yeah um and uh i've seen some of you i saw some of yours you did yeah Sorry, i did man. no it was, cool. <laughs> it was cool man. well i just made it like a happy hour and i ended up mm -hmm. dude i would get so like so drunk on those nights <laughs> and i'd like end up on the phone with like people i hadn't seen in years like kids from i went to like high school with or like shit i saw you playing tonight man you still do it you know because it was such a weird time yeah but the one thing that i noticed and i thought it was really awesome was i, I would do them uh, like a month on and then a month off and when i do the month off people would be like shit that was like my thursday that yeah. was my thing. Yeah. Like I'm just sitting here in my fucking house and I had like my time my Johnny time and now you're taking it away from me and that really that you realized how much what we do means to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get that a lot during that time? Yeah, like, I people think so. needed yeah. those shows. Yeah. I think so. I I think it definitely it ebbed and flowed, you know, during the course of the of the whole thing. I, I definitely think people cared about it more at more times than others, which is normal. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I I'm a musician and I don't want to see live streams all the time. You know what I mean? I mean, so, and, and I'm into music, you know what I mean? And yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. want to support. Yeah. So I, I totally get it. You know I mean? I think, 
I think for anything, you know, it's the, the important thing is like being connected to the essence of the art and the music and being connected to people. And those two things are, I think, are, are interconnected. And those, those are the things that I love about music the most yeah. is the creation of it. Yeah. And, and being in a community, being out at the Sahara Lounge, like we yeah. were there on, on Saturday night. Yeah. We were playing there. And, uh, you know, just seeing so many friends and yeah. seeing people and being in the community. And so, you know, that's always a big component of of Atlas Mayor is also how we are connected to the Middle Eastern community, to the Indian community, to the Persian community, to, you know, um, the UT ensemble, the African, the Africanite Sahara scene, all these cats, you know, uh, and supporting everybody. And cause you know, this kind of international world music scene yeah. is not something that people really think about, yeah. about Austin. And it's really special. And there's yeah. a lot of really happening things here yeah. that have been happening for a long time. Yeah. Like I did an interview on sun radio like years ago. They had no idea that like one of the famous, uh, I mean, and this is not a critique uh, of anybody, but like they had no idea that Hamza Adin was a very famous oud player, taught at UT in the seventies for like a decade. I have no idea. I, and the, and then yeah, a lot of not people, and it's yeah. it's it's not, it's not a criticize. Uh, I'm not criticizing them, but it was, it was the smugness in which they were talking about it, as if like, oh, this is the first time we've ever had this music ever on the air, and it's like actually no, man. Like the guy lived yeah. here for a long time. Yeah, yeah, like he lived here like for and taught at UT for like over a decade. And he's like one of the most prolific musicians. So anyways, it's all good. It's all love. You know what I mean? Well, no, no, no. I, you, yeah, you know what I mean? We're also like in the middle of Texas, too. Yeah, so well, there's, there's sure. Like a, like, you sure, know, but yeah. it's Austin. You yeah, yeah. Know? yeah. But it's yeah. Austin. You know, it's, it's, still, it's still Austin, I think, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That's a good... <laughs> yeah, I think I it think, is, too. You know? <laughs> At least last time I looked. <laughs> At that Unity show, I got that. I like I like going to things where everybody's at the thing. Like when you see someone at a at a Sonic, uh, uh, Sonic Guild. Yes. I was going to call it Sonic Ranch, but that's that's in studio. El Paso. Yeah. You guys ever go out there? No, but I heard it's pretty dope. That's dope. I have some man. friends that went out there. Yeah, you've been. That's that's dope, man. Dude, we would love to go out there. Check this yeah. out. I was in a band in that that band, but like fucking 1998, I went out there and looked at it with them, and we were going to record out there. But like the guy that we were producing with was from New York City, and he was like, "I am not living in the middle of nowhere. Like I'm just not. <laughs> sure, like, that's not what I'm I'm doing." Totally. So we ended up going to L.A. But I became friends with Tony, the guy that owns it. And so I've never recorded there, but I've gone there and just like stayed for a couple of days. Nice. Like, just rode out, horses yeah. and smoked weed and motorcycles and shit. Like not motorcycles, <laughs> but like four wheelers and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. Yeah. I just made myself seem tough. Like I ride a motorcycle. That's why I had to immediately <laughs> correct myself. Riding bikes and stuff, man. Yeah. Riding bikes put, and stuff. Put Sing your it. chaps on, Johnny. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I need to wear my chaps. <laughs> Chap so it up. Guys, Chap it guys, up. You guys have, have more music ready to go record. And yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We have music uh, ready to record, and uh, yeah. um, one of the one of the things uh, that we badly need to do is to finish a bunch of songs so that when people come and see us next, and in the, in the coming months, they're going to get a very different show. Yeah, you know. Do you guys have other jobs? Like, what else do you do? You don't mind saying it. Some people do mind. I play music. Okay. I play music. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's I all. Do, I do some booking work doing and right stuff now. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot you have to do. I mean, I do too. But like, I've got to go to Arizona and write songs with some fucking uh, financial company. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then I got to go play a cover, sing at somebody's wedding. Yeah, and I got to go do another thing at a place, and then finally get back to my music, do the podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a hustle. It and, is a hustle, and you know, I think balance and focus is man really key. You know, and yeah, just like time management skills. and it's great that you guys are able to sort of like adapt your size to like whatever gig you're doing and you can kind of do because i bet that makes it like a little easier like when you guys can make a little bread doing something just the two of you as opposed sure. to like a whole band thing yeah sure that's definitely a thing i mean you know originally we were a trio this band years ago because of that because we couldn't like find someone like a dedicated musician at that time but like uh, because we are flexible, it does help with that. But also beyond that, it's actually serving our creative endeavors yeah. to be able to do different things. It's not so much like, oh, we have to settle for this way of doing it. It's like, no, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, you know um, how we're doing it. So, mm -hmm. can I ask you a weird question? Like, where do you yeah. get a where do you get a, an oud? And and if it and if it breaks, who fixes it? <laughs> Getting it is much easier than finding someone yeah. who can fix it <laughs> yeah. reliably. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, you can you <laughs> That's get the guy uh, that gets like one ood every two years to work on or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely a challenge finding the finding the right people to work on it. Yeah, if you need that done. Uh, but you generally you you just order them directly from a, a maker. Okay. Because um, there's not yeah it's like there's there's not really too many places here in the states where you can walk into a music shop and and see one. You can't um, just walk into straight. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I remember my first one I found at a pawn shop in Dallas. Actually. Yeah. So you do find them, and I actually I found a really amazing one. Um, oh, where was that? It was at another pawn shop. But it's this, uh, it was made in like 1938 in Chicago by this Armenian oud maker who came over here um, and be- <laughs> became a furniture maker in Chicago. But he mm. made several ouds and some of them are still around and I have one. I found wow. one in a pawn shop. It's amazing. Um, yeah, that is amazing. So they're around. You can find them, you, um, you know, eBay, Craigslist. Occasionally you'll see. I do, every once in a while I'll check the Austin Craigslist and just search for, for oud and Every once in a while, there's one up. Somebody's selling one. Um, they're usually not very good. But does anyone ever come up to you after a show and like, "Hey, I just got an oud. Will you give me lessons?" <laughs> it does happen. It, it, it has it happened does? actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually teaching a kid um, out in West Austin for, like several years ago for a while. Yeah, um, and it was something like that where somebody saw us at a show and was like, "Oh, you know, can you teach my kid oud?" I was like, "Yeah." Great. <laughs> More often, there's people just asking in general, "What is this instrument?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of that. I think that's a really cool thing. That's it another is really thing cool. about it bands is, like Leyline. There's an educational component. Yeah, like you, I learned you a get lot to from educate you guys people today. a little bit about cool. different cultures. Yeah. And about kind of the and history too. You know, it's like if somebody's really interested, we can go into the whole thing about like, yeah, you know, the this instrument's been around for at least a millennia, um, based on you know carvings in in certain places yeah um and it traveled all over this whole region of the world and then it came to europe and then it became the european lute and then the guitar and then you know it's this whole progression of Is, uh, history that you can talk about with people it's fun did you did you see robin hood Dis- the disney world robin hood with the fox robin oh yeah hood? is the guy that little john and robin hood walking through the forest dearly de- was that is that an, is that a lute that That's, he's playing yeah i think it's well it's either a lute or uh, it could be there's a couple of other instruments that look like that that it right, might right. be but it's probably it's some sort of lute yeah you know? but there's some yeah there's some different medieval instruments that have that same uh one of the names is spacing me right now I thought you were going to but, talk about the Kevin Costner Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's any loops Brian in that Adams uh, yeah, cover, yeah. you know? Everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that song. Uh, I'm just joking. I, I did not like that movie, man. I remember going to see that it's at the bummer. theater it's and just being like, this, yeah. is, this is the worst Robin Hood. The Disney one's better than this. For the sure. Fox one. <laughs> yeah. The Fox one is the, is the one, for sure. Uh, well, guys, man, congratulations on the CP Hadal. Thank fantastic you. yeah album or ep and uh i'm i i love it i can't wait to hear more and uh i've got a austin music foundation showcase on that friday i won't be able to make it to yours but there's a lot maybe we'll, maybe i'll get to come out and see a show i hope so yeah yeah, yeah man for yeah. sure always great to be here you know yeah and thanks for coming on yeah again. beautiful yeah anything else i'm missing I think that's it. It's Josh good. Peters and Joshua Thompson. That's right. Yeah. I like that you guys use a distinction like that. There's Joshua and Josh. I mean, Peters you can call Thompson. me Josh. I won't punch you. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, you know? <laughs> we're both, we're both Joshua. Pretty we, flexible. Uh, yeah, we try Joshua. to try to make some differentiations for people since we're, we're constantly, uh, being like, Hey, this is Joshua and this is Joshua and this is, <laughs> and then we're playing with Josh flowers on bass. So uh, then there's <laughs> another one of us. <laughs> Josh cubed. Yeah. It reminds me when uh, I think Gary Clark Jr. was all backed by John's at one point. Uh, yeah, yeah. John Keys. Yeah. John. Uh, Johnny, oh, yeah. Johnny Rabbit. John Michael yeah. on bass. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it happens, man. It happens. It happen. Well, guys, it was great having you on. Everyone get out there and check out this EP. It's gorgeous and, uh, and you, they're awesome. Can't wait to hear more. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Cheers. Gang, that's Joshua Thompson and Josh Peters from Atlas Mayor. Their EP, Hadal, available now wherever it is you stream and download jams. If you're listening to this show the day it comes out, they are playing tonight, Friday, March 17th. Their South by Southwest set 
at Parker Jazz Lounge at midnight. That's right. Even after the Austin Gen Next thing that I told you about. Yeah, you can you can make them all. You can go you can go and then you can go see uh, Atlas Mayor do their set at midnight at Parker Jazz Lounge. Go to atlasmayor.com for all of your Atlas Mayor needs. I want to thank Josh and Joshua for coming by. It was really great talking to them and actually very educational. Very nice talking to these dudes, amazing musicians, making amazing music. Get out there and check out Hadal now. And gang, don't forget when you're out there checking out Hadal, maybe you're checking it out on Spotify. We're on Spotify. Find us. Listen to us there. Follow us. Leave us a rating. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Follow us on Facebook. How did I get here? On Facebook. Find us on there. Do it, baby. We're there. Follow us and you'll know all kinds of stuff that's going on. All right. Enjoy the rest of your South by Southwest. Enjoy the rest of this song, Hadal, from the EP Hadal by the band Atlas Mayor, playing tonight at midnight, uh, Friday, March 17th. Oh, yeah. Happy St. Patrick's Day. At Parker Jazz Lounge (laughs) at midnight. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your South by Southwest. Let's get down.